Best of r slash Tales from Tech Support Episode 146. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Right click on my trackpad isn't working. I'm completely unable to work the woman with a USB mouse attached. Literally just got off the phone with this woman. Client. My trackpad is broken and I'm completely stuck. Please fix it. Me. Okay. Are you able to type on the keyboard as well? Is it just the trackpad that's not functioning? Client. Yeah, the keyboard works fine, and I can move the mouse around on the trackpad, I just can't right click. Me. Do you happen to have a USB mouse nearby we can use in the meantime? Client. Yes, I do. Wiggles mouse. Cursor moves. Me. Oh, it's attached already? Client. Well, yeah it's my mouse. Me. I just want to clarify. Right click isn't working on the trackpad or the mouse? Client. The trackpad. I right click when using our programs. I can't work without it. Me. Does right click work on the USB mouse? Client. I haven't tried. Should I? Me. Yes please. Right click works. Me. So if right click isn't working on the trackpad, it's possible it's a hardware issue and we'll have to contact Dell for a warranty repair. I'll get the ball rolling on that and let you know what the next steps are. Client. So I'm just not supposed to be able to work? Me. No. You should be able to work just fine. You. Client. I can't work without my trackpad. Mr. A.T. Me. Mom. You have a working mouse in your hand. You can work using that. Client. Me. Client. Okay. So you'll let me know about the warranty thing? Me. Yes mom. I'll send you a follow up email with all the next steps. Client. K thank you. Bye. This job is hilarious sometimes. Thank you. Next. Another will work for food slash booze story from my local market. Could have been epic but no big deal thankfully. So about a week ago a mentally ill person basically attacked my local market slash liquor store slash deli about 2 o'clock in the morning breaking out the windows and tearing down the point of sale in the liquor store side. Which is impressive since another buddy of mine built it. Heavy duty. So the locals in the town managed to subdue the person without too much injury. Bucky got a cut thumb from the guy who also had a shovel he was swinging around. Nobody got shot. The police finally came after like 40 minutes and didn't shoot anyone either. Thankfully. And the fellow was sent to mental health services somewhere. Best of luck to them. Anyway. The point of sale in the liquor side is a mishmash of ethernet piped in from his office through the walls. The guy tore it all out. They got it all put back together but couldn't get enough lines to run all the stuff. My buddy calls me in. I brought my tester and all this expecting to rebuild cables. Maybe run new ones? Who knows what stress those cables got or damage to equipment. Could be anything. So I go in hot. That got a few of the systems working by the time I got there by talking to vendors tech support but were lacking two connections. Hours and hours on tech support etc and no go. Something is seriously wrong. Thus my call. All those are down are connected to a basic switch. Which got unplugged during the rumble. I tested all the connections. And then. Plugged it back into the wall. And Kablam. You are a genius omg why didn't we call you sooner. Zero it took like 30 minutes at the most. So I got a huge deli sandwich and a bottle of Laird's Apple Jack as compensation and a few bucks. Remember kids. If the lights aren't on. Check the power. Zero. You feel like a fraud when they all think you are so smart for plugging something in. But what the fuck right? It's a job. Thank you. Next. It's been a few years since I work tech support. But this one has always stuck with me. C is customer. Me is me. Anything in parenthesis is in inner monologue. Me. Thank you for calling tech support my name is Brahma6. How can I help? C. Hi up. Fuck me they already sound dumb. I just bought a new phone from the store and I just needed help with a few things. Me. MHMMM. A few is either one really stupid thing or a thousand stupid things yeah sure no problem. What kind of phone did you get? C. Honestly. It was a while ago. So I don't remember the exact model. But it was one of Samsung cheaper J series models. So I'm gonna go with J7. I bought the Samsung J7. Me. Alright then. So what seems to be the problem? C. I traded in my S8 for the J7. You want M8? 
do save a few bucks on my bill. When I traded the phone in, the store app, fucking store apps, told me it would do exactly everything the S8 would do. Me. Okay so what is the J7 not doing that the S8 did do? I swear if it's something dumb that the phone just physically cannot do. I'm ending it all here. See, it won't cast to my TV. When I play a video, it doesn't show the little box in the corner of the video. Me. Carefully places shotgun barrel in mouth. Oh I see what you're saying. So the reason that isn't a feature on the phone is it's just not physically capable of doing that. It's too much for the phone to handle since it only has a gain. Just a guess. 2 gigabytes of RAM. RAM is basically a multitask tool for devices to do multiple things at once. Playing and casting a video is too much for the phone to handle. See. Oh okay. I've heard of RAM and people saying it's a good upgrade to computers to make them run better. Right? Me. Don't you fucking dare say what I think you're about to say. Yes that is correct. See. Where can I buy more RAM for this then? Ugh well at least he didn't ask if he can download it. Me. You can't buy RAM for foe. See. What do you mean I can't just buy more RAM for my phone? These phones are basically computers aren't they? Me. I mean it exactly how I said it. What's so hard to comprehend about what I said? In a sense. Yes phones are basically computers now. They just aren't modular like a computer is. You can take components out and replace them. See. So how am I supposed to watch my YouTube videos on my TV now? Me. Honestly. You would either need to get the similar phone back you had before. Or you can get a fire stick. Which is probably cheaper. And download the YouTube app to that. See. Oh boy. Silence. My favorite. No. That's way too complicated. There's gotta be a setting or something you're forgetting. Me. Where'd that shotgun go? No. I promise you. I wouldn't lie about it. If I were lying, I would have suggested getting the top of the line new phone. I don't work for Amazon. So me suggesting the fire stick should show I have your best interest here. See. What's Amazon got to do with this? Me. Seriously. How did I lose that damn shotgun? Amazon makes the fire sticks. Again? I promise it's the cheapest route for you. It really would have been. The restocking fee alone is more than a fire stick. See. No way. You're just being lazy. Get me a supervisor. Now. Me. Alright I'll get the supervisor. From here. I don't know what was said. I got distracted talking to a friend. But I do know my supervisor advised them of the same thing I did and he decided to go to the store and just buy a better phone anyway. Thank you. Next. You don't know how my account is set up. So. Today was eventful. Language warning. I received a call from a colleague at a different support desk. I work in a large MSP with multiple offices slash client bases. Me. Duh. Oe. Other engineer. Knob. Customer. T minus 15 minutes until the end of my shift. Phone rings. Me. Hey dude. You all right? Oe. Yep mate. Got this dude on the line from dollar sign company, won't listen to me, can you speak some sense into him? Now a short backstory, dollar sign company moved to the other desk for dedicated support, but previously were one of the customers that I supported. Nob, hello, yes ticket number is xxxxxx, me, perfect just pulling that up, it says here that you say that you bought a Microsoft 365 E3 license when you started at the company, Nob. Yes. That's what I explained to OE. Local IT told me to buy it on dollar sign not company domain. Me. So looking at your 365 account here, you definitely don't have an E3 license. You only have an E1 license. Not unheard of, but definitely not usual. E1 licenses come with exchange for emails and not much else. No Word or Excel. Nob. Well I can't open Word. It tells me that I need an extra license. I renewed it last week. Me. Well by the looks of it, you've bought a license on your own tenant. Not one that we manage. Dollar sign company should be giving you an E3 license if you need access to Word. I can contact the local IT team if you need us to apply this for you. An E1 license doesn't come with Word. Nob. No. I renewed the license last week. My account should have one on it already. Me. Sir. Dollar sign company will provide the license for you. You don't need to spend your own money on it. 
knob. You don't know how my account is set up. This is fucking bullshit. I'm going to speak to local IT. Me. They'll tell you the same thing that I have told you. I am not sure why they didn't provide the license for you, but they definitely wouldn't have told you to buy one. Nob. They did. They said it was a requirement when I started. Me. Well I'll have to leave this till on site to handle. Have a nice day. Nob. Not fucking happy. Click. I have no idea what he wanted me to do to be honest. He bought it on his own will and dollar sign company is renowned for being the reason for the word P-E-B-C-A-K existing. Muppet. T-L. Doctor. Dude buys his own M365 license and gets angry because he won't accept that he bought the wrong license and that we can't help him as it's not our tenant. Thank you. Next. Where's the one key? A couple of years ago while working for an MSP I took a call from a medical center we supported. The user was having problems logging in. Whenever her password needed to be changed this particular user was notorious for badgering our techs into just setting the password as the same password every time. I was not overly opposed to this but when I reviewed the account I explained HIPAA regulations and that her password had to change. We agreed to the same password with the number one after it. Seriously I didn't need to put in another 30 minutes to get her to pick another password. After she agreed, I changed the password for her. Not worth the added time to get her to enter it twice. I asked her to log in and she kept saying the password wasn't accepted. I connected to her computer and counted the characters she had typed. Once I figured out she had left the one off of her password I pointed out to her that she needed to press the number one on her keyboard. Her response, where is that? This was not a laptop or any special type of keyboard. This was your typical Dell keyboard with a one in the top row of the keyboard and on the number pad. Since her number lock was likely off, I decided to direct her to the top row of her keyboard. After a minute or two of explaining it was above the letter Q she finally found it. Once she logged in I closed the ticket and took a very long break. Thank you. Next. I got a bit colon error. So this happened yesterday around noon. Me. This is the IT service desk. Lady. Hi I don't know what's going on but my I can't do anything with my computer at all. Me. Is the computer frozen? Lady. No it's all black. Me. So what happened right before this? Lady. Well I was trying to log in and it wasn't accepting my password and so I tried over and over again and then suddenly the screen went black. I think it's called a bit colon error. Me. Oh I see. That's actually called bit locker and I can help you with that. I proceeded to get her out of BitLocker and got her password changed so she doesn't lock herself out again. Thank you. Next. Oh. Nancy. Hello friends. Second time poster here. This happened moments ago and I have to share it with somebody. I do database slash server administration for a relatively large application. My job description is a little fuzzy so people, developers, testers, and users tend to ask me for help when they hit a wall and they're just not sure who else to ask. I get an email this morning from a middle manager, we'll call him Kyle, that one of his users is having trouble logging in. When users log in, they put in their username and password, then it takes them to a second page where they put in a security code, either from an MFA authenticator app if they have that set up, or else they click a link and get the code in their email. Apparently this lady, we'll call her Nancy, is not receiving the email. Kyle says he has been manually overriding the security code so that she's been able to get logged in and work. First of all I do a double take, because I didn't realize that was something he was able to do and it's more than a little concerning. But I put that on the mental back burner and start looking at this security code issue. Nancy's account looks okay, it's only a week old, and it has an email address associated to it. I check the email logs and... There are no emails to her address. So it's not that the emails with the codes aren't sending, they aren't even getting generated and queued. Next I check the security code logs. Sure enough, there are no entries associated with her account. Now I start to get the creeping sense of dread that I know exactly what the problem is. See, I don't like to assume that when a user has an issue, it's because they are doing something wrong. I feel like that makes people feel dumb. And that's the easiest way to get on their bad side. It doesn't help that I'm going through middle management. Because in addition to offending the user I run the risk of offending him for overlooking something simple. So I look through some more logs. 
I dig through the code for the login page. I try it myself and check the result. I don't want to believe it's something so obvious, but the only conclusion I can come up with is that Nancy just isn't actually clicking the link to generate a security code at all. So I type out an email as carefully and diplomatically as I can explaining this. I hit send and then I don't get much work done for the next 20 minutes while I anxiously await an angry response. Kyle responds, this was indeed the issue. Apologies for not catching that myself. I sigh with relief, then laugh out loud. Sometimes users can be dumb, but at least some of them are nice about it. Update. So apparently what he did was not actually override it, but he got Nancy to give him her one-time password key, which he put into his authenticator app to get a code, and whenever she needed to log in he would just email her the code. Definitely a facip and don't do that moment, but at least he doesn't have elevated permissions by accident or something.